They're covered in 140,000 square metres of paint. They have 4,000 lights and 400 kilometres of cabling and wiring. The two longest road tunnels in the country, part of Auckland's $1.4 billion Waterview connection, are getting the finishing touches before they open in four months. Sharon Brett Kelly went for a drive through and finds out what it would be like if there was a crash and a fire. That's the sound of an emergency in the tunnel. 90 litres of water per second pours out of nozzles in the tunnel roof. Today it's being turned on for the media. In a real fire there would be three times as much water. So if there was an emergency in the tunnel, say a two vehicles crashed into each other and, and a fire started, what would happen is that uh, that would set off all the sensors in the tunnel and automatically the tunnel would work out what area the fire is at and would turn on the deluge system, which is what we've just seen here. Brett Glidden, the transport agency's Auckland Highway Manager, explains what would happen in a real emergency as the torrent floods the road and jet fans blast air through the tunnel. At the same time, uh, the fire service would be alerted and the emergency crews would be arriving at the tunnel and um, we would be able to shut the tunnel and get everyone out of this tunnel, into the tunnel next door through the cross passages and the emergency crews could enter. The 2.4 kilometre long twin tunnels are part of the Waterview Connection, the country's largest ever roading project. It also includes a giant interchange at Great North Road to connect the northwestern and southwestern motorways. Brett Glidden calls it a one in a lifetime project. It is an engineering masterpiece and um, it's been very, very tricky to build. It's the tenth biggest board tunnel, uh, road tunnel in the world. And when you do tunnelling, it, it, it is a very risky type of construction technique and to do it without any issue and safely as we have here is just a fantastic achievement. Tunnelling first began three years ago, digging down more than 40 metres below ground. The famous tunnel boring machine called Alice, one of the largest of its kind in the world, pulled out 800,000 cubic metres of spoil, enough to fill 320 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Engineer and project manager Ian Simmons says turning Alice around halfway through to start on the second tunnel was one of the big challenges. We had a tunnelling machine that weighed three and a half thousand tonnes that we had to turn around in a box where we only had something like 150 millimetres of clearance. Some of the other challenges we've got across the project, yeah, we have a very um, beautiful aesthetic footbridge in the south here. And that's a very complex structure in the way it's made in terms of the pre-stressed concrete, in terms of the suspension of the, the deck. Up in the north, yeah, the challenges up there are really around the ramps. Instead of having to get a crane in to lift them and close the motorway, we, we did it with a gantry that actually picked the beam up and then travelled forward over the gap and dropped the, dropped the beams down. Ian Simmons says the people have made the project special. We've had more than 10,000 people inducted onto this project. There's well over 10 million man-hours have been worked on this project. We meet politicians, we meet local community stakeholders, councillors, and it's... Um, it's great just, just to mix with a huge range of people. At peak time, 15,000 vehicles will travel on the six lanes of the two tunnels. The statistics might be world beaters, but it will take just two minutes to drive through the tunnels at top speed of 80 kilometres. Mō te hōtaka o te ahi ahi ko Sharon Brett Kelly Aho.